Today I'm going to compare two uh, 80 millimeter refractor telescopes. This is a Scott Watch Star Travel 80 millimeter focal length 400, and this is the Sky Watcher Pro Series 80 millimeter uh, focal length is 600 millimeters. This is f5. This is f7.6. Let's look at the catalog page for them first. This is the optical product guide of the OVL Optical Vision Limited, the representative of Sky Watcher in the United Kingdom and uh, the Skull Watcher products are sold by them through them to many other outlets. This is a 2020 catalog, they are the same almost. Uh, this is a very old line of the production that they have. So this is the Star Travel 80, 3.1 inch, 80 millimeter, F5, achromatic refractor. And uh, it comes in two versions. This one is tabletop. This one comes on a uh, altazimuth mount. You can get it also on the uh, equatorial mount. I will use just a tabletop mount, not like this one. I will use from a different uh, sky washer telescope, a tiny one for this. And uh, now let's go for the other one. The best uh, match for this uh, Pro Series is not in the production line anymore but this is the closest to it DS Pro uh, of course this one that we have is a gold version is around the year 2000 we are talking about it was manufactured the latest models come with this uh, they're all having shot glass in them that is a very good uh, upper chromatic glass that they have and it is a 3.1 inch 80 millimeter f7.5 ED glass focal length is 600 millimeter it comes like as an optical tube assembly with two uh, uh, tube rings and a, a Vixen dovetail. You don't get a mount with this, but if you want, you can just uh, use the mount that you have. In a way, it's hard to believe these two telescopes are both 80 millimeter refractors, 3.1 inch, but they are. They are fast refractors, the short tube, compared to what was available, for example, in the 30, 40 years ago from Japanese manufacturer, which were really long tube ones. The lens production, and since the Chinese have taken over uh, the telescope making uh, in the world, they have really improved. Uh, this is the lens cap of this, and the lens cap of the other one is quite smaller compared to that. You can see that. Although both of them are 80, um, Millimeter. I shine the flash into it. It shows a little bit of the, you know, uh, dirt on it. Is not visible when you visually look at it. There is no effect due to that. This is the uh, upper chromatic ED version of this uh, 80 millimeter one, f.7, and this is the star travel again. You can see the lens. This is the objective lens of the. The price for this one is around, uh, depending on how much you, you know, you pay for it, where you get it, around 400, 500 pounds. You can get it second hand cheaper. This is again, probably around, uh, depending if you get it with a mount or just uh, optical tube assembly, anything between 150 to 250 pounds, depending on the, you know, retail price of the time. Uh, almost half the price. This is almost half the price of this one. Both of them are available to the observers. As you can see, this is a quite a smaller when it comes to the size of the tube. And as such, it's easier and it needs a smaller or less capable mount to use it. For this uh, comparison, I use two uh, orthoscopic eyepieces, the full Wixen 25mm ortho and again another 25mm Wixen and Wixen is the best eyepiece, it just shows the image as it is, no aberration uh, and image will be bright, but just use it. The only difference between these two in the optical path other than the 
quality of the lens is that this is now having a is equipped with a two inch uh, diagonal and this one is one and a quarter inch diagonal and look at the size and the comparison of the sizes you can see that they're both 80 uh, 80 millimeter 8 centimeter 3.1 inch you can see that this one is quite have a heft and uh, that is f7.1 and this is f5 quite a smaller more compact okay i'll put these two telescopes on the tabletop mounts that I have. The tabletop on the uh, right is the one for Skywatcher Heritage, I think 100, and on the left is for Skywatcher Flex Tube 130. So this can take the heavier telescope and this can take the lighter telescope and it's ad adequate for both of them. Um, and let's just compare the view to the eyepiece. This is a, a 25 millimeter Wixen orthoscopic eyepiece and this is another Wixen 25 millimeter orthoscopic eyepiece. So both of them using the same eyepiece. I will be looking at those flowers you see there. So I will try to pick up a few flowers that are actually easy to see and have the good color range. Probably any of these or probably this one we will see which one shows best okay let's just start with this uh, star travel 80 uh, achromatic telescope this is a f5 refractor And that was the view through this telescope with the 25 mm otoscopic eyepiece. And that was the view through this uh, telescope. Let's go watch uh, ED80 Pro Series. Okay, I must say visually the view is much more brighter than what you saw in the video. This is just a camera picking up like that. Visually it's much brighter. I'm going now to look at those uh, yellow flowers with the white flowers on the hanging basket. First through the Star Travel 80. Now we will try to the uh, ED Pro Series 80 millimeter. So, uh, you saw the view through these both telescopes, one a uh, achromat and the other one is an uh, apochromat. They're both 80 millimeter and uh, visually the image of both was very bright. Uh, this had a magnification is slightly bigger with the same uh, eyepiece. It's because the focal length of this telescope is a bit longer. This had a wider view, field of view in that sense.
if you use them for you know observing the star clusters and some of the brighter nebula and galaxies both of them probably perform the same i have used both of them to observe the comet uh, zdf this was definitely good this was a little bit narrower but this i prefer this one because it was a smaller and easier to manage the view on this is excellent for lunar and planetary through this is all right but you have some chromatic aberration into that uh, you see uh, false colors around the bright objects like moon or uh, but it's not that much that to bother you you know you you can live with that um, the image quality of this one is pure it just uh, render the colors uh, loyal to the what is originally perfect for terrestrial viewing if you want and both of them I recommend in the price range there are different price range there are different sizes for different you know uh, customers probably you can say different budgets you can say also so which one I prefer I, I use both of them this one is the standard I use for comparing the eyepieces so that's uh, for me a benchmark this one I use it just for general grab-and-go observation when I just don't want to carry something heavy